NumPy. So NumPy stands for Numerical Python. Num means numerical, py means Python. So NumPy is an open source Python library. It's an open source Python library. So this NumPy contains data structures like multi-dimensional arrays or n-dimensional arrays, nd arrays. Right. And variety of or n number of functions to operate on these arrays. Functions to operate on these arrays. Right. So NumPy uh, basically is used for numerical operations. So uh, now in NumPy, the question is uh, if um, uh, we already have lists in Python, we have lists in Python. So if we already have lists, why to go for NumPy? Right. Let's say I have this list A, which stores numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then if let's say I have this NumPy array uh, called as A dash, which is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You see, this array exactly looks like this list. And if I have this array, why should we go? Why should if I have this list, why should we go for this array? Right? This array exactly looks similar to this list except for this comma here. Right? We don't have comma here in this array, right? Now the answer is numpy arrays are faster in processing. They are faster in processing. Processor is able to process these arrays faster. That's the main reason why uh, we go for NumPy arrays over lists. <coughs> now, the idea is why, why these NumPy arrays are faster in processing. The thing is, they are stored by using what is called a static memory allocation. Static memory allocation. And whereas these lists are stored by using dynamic memory allocation. Now, what is the meaning of static memory location? This data is stored contiguous in contiguous memory locations in the RAM, right, or in memory. Whereas this data is not stored in contiguous memory location in RAM or memory. Now, for example, if this is your RAM, for example, just say this is your RAM, Let's say this is memory location 1000, just say 1000, just for example, this is 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, so and so forth. So let's say to store, in order to store this, we require two bytes. In order to store this integer, we require two bytes. So this one will be stored on these two bytes. This two will be stored on these two bytes this 3 will be stored on these two, uh, two bytes, so on and so forth. So this data is stored in contiguous memory locations, right? These are memory addresses, For ex uh, th just for example, memory addresses are not exactly like this. Uh, so uh, this data is stored in contiguous memory locations, whereas this data is stored in, uh, you know, it is not stored in contiguous memory locations. If, let's say, 1 is stored on 1000 memory location, this 2 may be stored on, let's say, 5000 memory location. 3 may be stored on 3000 memory location. Right, so on and so forth. So this data is not stored in contiguous memory location. This is dynamic memory allocation, right? So that's the reason why NumPy arrays are faster than this list. That's why these NumPy arrays are preferred over this list for this, see this example, this array is very small, but when the arrays are very large, right? In, in real life, we have, uh, you know, millions and billions of records. So that times, this will really matter. This will really matter. Now let's see a few terms which are used in this NumPy, uh, NumPy discussion. So the first term is called as one-dimensional array. 1D array. 
So one D array looks like this. Before that, uh, we have something called a scalar. A single number like 10 is called a scalar. 1D array, second term is 1D array or vector. 1D array or vector, right? So it looks like this 10, 20, 30, 40. It is it it say it it has only one dimension. It has only one dimension, right? If you call the property called a shape of this array shape, there is a property in Python or in NumPy called a shape. If we call this property, if we check this property for this array, it will produce an answer four comma. That means there are four elements in this array. The shape is four. Shape of this array is 4, yeah. 4 comma because this term is this is a tuple that's why this comma is there so so and if you call endim endim there is property called as endim on this array if name of the array is a if you call a dot endim that means number of dimensions of this a you will get an answer one shape will be four because there are this array contains four elements and number of dimensions are one then there is a second term called as uh, a matrix or 2D array, 2D array or matrix. These 2D arrays are built on top of one dimensional array. That means this 2D array contains one dimensional arrays as elements. For example, if we, if we, uh, let's say we have this B is equal to, this is the 2D array. Right. It contains 1D array as elements. This is first 1D array, let's say, comma, this is second 1D array. So this is the first element of this 2D array, outer 2D array or array B. And this is the second element, right? Now let's say these contains element, these 1D arrays contains elements like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right. So this outer array is the two dimension array. Two dimension array contains one dimension arrays as elements. So this is first element. This is second element. They are separated by commas. The outer elements are separated by, comm separated by commas. And of course, the inner elements, uh, uh, inner array elements are also separated by commas. Now, uh, here these arrays are uh, array locations have indices this this first location of the array has index called as 0 this is index 0 this is index 1 this is index 2 this is index 3 this location first location of the array has index 0 second location of the array has index 1 third location of the array has index 2 fourth location of the array has index 3 so now similarly here for this array B, this is the first location. This is the first element, first location. That's why this is index 0. This complete array's index is 0. This element's index is 1. Right? Now inside this 0, inside this 0th element, we have 1D array. Right? So the indices of 1D array are 0, 1, 2, 3. Similarly inside this element 1, uh, or inside this location 1, we have 1D array. So the, the, the indices for this 1D array will be 0, 1, 2, 3, right? <coughs> now, if I want to access for this array, if I want to access this uh, the element inside the array, how will I access name of the array, square bracket, and name of the location, 2, A of 2. If I write A of 2, I'll get 30. If I write A of 3, I'll get 40. If I write A of 0, I'll get 10. If I write A of 1, I'll get 20. Similarly here, if I write B of 0, if I write B of 0, I'll get this 1D array, complete 1D array, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. If I write B of 1, I'll get this complete 1D array, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, if I want to access this element 2 of this array B, right, I'll say B 
first I need to go to zeroth element b of 0 inside b of 0 I want to go to location number 1 so this is written as second dimension right so b of 0 of 1 inside zeroth element I want to go to location 1 b of 0 of 1 okay that is how you access now if you want to access this 7 you will say b of you will reach to b of 1 b of 1 and inside 1 you want to access this 2 so b of 1 of 2 right okay so now uh, what is if i call this property endim on this endim b dot endim it will return me two because it has two dimensions two dimensions right this is now by looking at the array how will i come to know whether it's two dimension just by looking at the array if your starting brackets are two right starting brackets are two it is 2d array if starting bracket is only one it's 1d array if starting brackets are three like this this is 3d array four like this this is 4d array right so this end of b dot nd will return as two now what will this b dot shape return b dot shape b dot shape right now if you look uh, how many elements this outer uh, its shape will be you know here the shape was only one element now as this is two dimensional array the shape will be containing two elements shape will be of size two right so how can i compute the shape of this how many elements the outer array contains how many elements the outer array contains the first one and the second one so two the first element in the shape is always how many elements the outer array contains this 2d array contains this 2d array contains two elements this one and this one so two now next is next place is how many elements the inner array con contains one two three four right so shape is two comma four right outer array how many elements it contains two first one and the second one right that's why two and the next place is how many elements the inner array contains right four elements either this or this they can they both contain four elements of the or if there is one more it must also contain four element right okay so that is how you, you will you will compute the shape of this right now let's see the multi-dimensional array the third term here is the third term here is let's say three dimensional array 3d array first we'll see 3d array right so the 3d array is built on top of two dimensional array that means 3d array contains two dimensional arrays as elements let's say this is 3d array so this is 3d array right it contains 2d arrays as elements right 2d arrays now 2d arrays two brackets separated by comma this is first 2d array right this 3d array outer 3d array is containing 2d arrays as element this is the first 2d array comma this is the second 2d array this is the second 2d array right the outer 3d array is containing this 2d array this 2d array this is first 2d array this is second 2d array as element now this 2d array contains 1d array as element right and 1d array contains these scalars 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so the index of this element the index of this element is 0 this 2d array this is the first 2d array which is the zeroth element of this outer 3d array this is the second element whose index is 1 this 2d array's index is 1 that means let us call this array as c if we say c of 0 you will get this entire array you will get this entire array 
now if you uh, inside this array inside this array 2d array we have this as the first element whose index will be 0 this index will be 0 here right index of this 1d array will be 0 index of this 1d array will be 1 similarly here index of this 1d array will be 0 and index of this 1d array will be 1 inside this 1d array we have this 0th location this is 0th location 1 location 2 location 0th location 1 location 2 location 0th location 1 location 2 location 0 1 2 that means if you want to access if you say c of 0 of 0 c of 0 of 0 you will get this 1d array complete 1d array you will get and if you want to access element inside this 1d array for example let's say uh, this one so you will this is on 0th location inside this 1d array so you will say 0 c of 0 of 0 c of 0 of 0 will give us this right Similarly, C of 1 will give us this complete array, right? Inside 1, if you want to access this 1, you will say C of 1 of 1 will give us this array. And inside 1, if you want to access this 0, you will say 0. So this will give us this 10. Here, this will give us this 1. Right? So that is how we access the elements inside the 3d array now if you call c dot endim it will return us 3 because it's three dimension array look at the brackets here 1 2 3 starting brackets 3 right now how will you compute the shape of this c dot shape shape is how many elements now this is three dimension array that's why shape, shape will contain shape will have three elements 1 2 and 3 so how many elements the outer array contains that means this 3d array contains two elements first one and the second one right how many elements this 2d array which is the inner one contains this 2d array this and this they both contain two elements one and two one and two right so this this is also two. Now the third is how many elements the one D array contains. How many elements the three D array contain? How many elements the two D array contains? How many elements the one D array contains? One D array contains one two three as elements. Three elements, right? The shape is two comma two comma three. Two elements in the outer array first second. Two elements in the inner array first second, and three elements in the innermost array. Outermost to innermost. You are going from outermost to innermost that's what the shape is shape for this 3d array okay so that's the theory part in the next video we'll see how to implement or how to build this uh, uh, nd arrays or arrays in numpy so by the way this nd arrays are also called as tensors this nd arrays after 3d array we'll have nd array that means four dimension five dimension six dimension etc so these ND arrays are called as tensors, tensors in Python. So we'll see the implementation of this uh, and operation on this in the next video.